welcome to this video on Chinese astrology. We're going to shift gears from the Western system because I know you guys want to know about Aries to Pisces, but the Chinese system is very mystifying because it has its roots in Taoism or Taoism, but it also borrows from the rich culture of Buddhism as well. It's mostly about how the elements of the universe converge and fill your mental, mental, physical, and astral bodies work in unison to produce energy in the material world. Behind me and in my hands, you could see these three figures, very famous. The first one's name is Fuk, Lao, and Shao. These are known as the San Jiang deities of wealth, prosperity, and longevity. Now, these are originally Tao principles, which were incorporated in legalism and later Confucianism, and then even eventually Buddhist teachings. And this is part of the rich heritage of Chinese culture, especially what's going on today I think is relative to what's going on today. Behind me is a diagram of the body's astrophysical and mental charts and how all of these planetary energies sort of like trickle down into the nervous system, the spine, the upper point of the body. There are three major parts of the body. These are called the tians. The zan tian is the most important part. Sorry if I'm butchering it. I don't speak Mandarin or Cantonese, but I try my best to enunciate correctly. Um, this is known as the yun san, or the planetary body and all of these stars those three immortals that i just showed you those three principles are symbolic representations of fortune stars which i'm going to break down and discuss the unique distinction of the chinese system of astrology is that it focuses on five major elements incorporating three luck stars and 12 animals this is again a very Taoist principle predating a lot of the modern religions of today. So if you apply this, it's relative to systems like chiropractics, acupuncture, cranial sacral um, work, spinal network analysis, um, EFT, um, a lot of other psychological tapping techniques or um, spinal manipulative technique understanding that once you remove that blockage in your network system known as your meridians once you release that tension the flow of these five elements can move through you these elements are known as the wu feng sheng di i hope i didn't say it again correctly and they move every 12 years so we're gonna go through all the 12 animals of wood, then the next 12 animals in fire, then the next 12 animals in earth, following metal, and then lastly, water. One of my earliest mentors, Sensei Lu, he helped me to understand the relationship between Western astrology and the Chinese symbols. So the correlation between the Western signs can be found with the Chinese animals as well. For instance, Aries would signify dragon, and then Taurus would be snake, horse would be Gemini, ram or goat would be uh, cancer, monkey would be Leo, rooster, Virgo, and you could continue around until you get to your Chinese animal. Now, there's a difference between the systems. You can't just say, oh, you're a Leo, so you must be a monkey, or you're a tiger, so you must be an Aquarius. One can say this, but you have to take into consideration the metals, the elements as well. I mentioned Chinese astrology is based off Taoism. These are known as the eight Taoist immortals who govern over the eight directions of your room minus the center. These directions signify elements of your life. Relativity, maybe one direction signifies love or career. And depending on your birthday, you would calculate what number corresponds to your immortal or your element or direction. I discussed the significance of qua numbers, your birth year numbers, which you can calculate. I have this in my numerology video. Check it out in my um, post below. 
Now, this is a Bagua or a soul mirror, and these are the elements or the eight Taoist immortals which govern over your destiny. The way to calculate your Gua number is using your year. For a man and woman, it's different because you would subtract five or add five if you're a man or woman. If you're born after 2000, for men, it would be subtracting nine, and for women, it would be subtracting 10. If you don't want to do the calculations, don't worry. I have a chart here for you so that it can be much easier when you're trying to understand which qua number you are. If you're a man or a woman, this chart will definitely help you. Um, for blue, it would be man, and for a woman, it would be pink. The first of the Sun Xiang deities, the three star Sun Xiang, is Fu Xiang. Fu Xiang is the first of the wise men. He signifies your luck, your ability to generate prosperity in your life. Mostly like wealth and goods, charisma, positivity. Fu Xiang represents the planet Jupiter. Fu Xiang is Jupiter, the planet of wealth and luck and destiny and fortune. So he can be seen with children because Jupiter signifies a person's ability to have children. Progeny, your ability procreate and to expand yourself. Second of the Sun Xiang deities is known as Lu Xiang. Lu Xiang is your ability to learn and to teach. It's about law, etiquette, good behavior, test takings, and investment capabilities. This star is connected to the Ursa Minor. In Hinduism, the Ursa Minor star corresponds to the Sat Parishis because it's made up of seven stars. This star is enormous. It, it expands for 65 degrees between all of Cancer all the way into Virgo, a huge star. So you can understand the importance of this star, especially its effect on other cultures. Ursa Minor constellation represents the seven great Satparishis who gave us the Vedas today. So even to the Indians, this was an extremely important star. The Satparishis um, gave us Vedic astrology, gemology, crystal healing, acupuncture, um, understanding of energy and theosophy and religious studies and pujas and ceremonies and mantras. Basically, all the teachings of the Vedas comes from this particular star. And the final star is known as your Xiaoxing. Xiao Lao is known as the immortal. Um, this star is known as Canopus, the Canopus star. And there are a lot of different mythologies associated with the three immortals or the three wise men. These three wise men can also be found in the Bible as well. So there you go. You get a correlation right there, a connection. I love when that happens. Shao Lao was the wanderer. In India, the Canopus star corresponded to one of the greatest sages who ever existed. I did a post on the Naughty Leafs. Um, check it out, the origins of astrology. The Shao Lao star or the Canopus star is associated with Agastya Maharishi, who you know gave us the Nadi leaves, the system of astrology. Him and another um, Rishi named Brigyu gave the Hindus the understanding of astrology. Today, Agastya Maharishi is still known as the wandering mystic. It's that he wandered for 4,000 years, which would sort of connect him to Shao Lao. You can see the connections cross-culturally. Many of you guys drink Argo tea. So the Canopus star happens to be the head of the boat. This creates the entire boat star that's spoken about in a lot of different mythologies. In relation to the final star, this signifies age your voyage throughout life, your dexterity, your endurance, your longevity. So that's why the Canopus star is connected to Shao Lao, the great immortal. So those are the three stars, the three stars that are most important in Chinese astrology. Thank you so much for listening. I dedicate this video to the Asian movement that's going on right now. 
know there's a lot of craziness going on in the world, but know that it's happening for a grander purpose. We may not always be able to see it because we have anger and frustration and rage in the way, but it's going to lead us to our life's journey as long as we stay true to our cause. Peace and love.